Hi there and welcome to episode 8 of the Valencia Property Podcast. This week we're going to be talking about what to expect day to day as you live and possibly work in Valencia. We look at the advantages and disadvantages of living in the city or the suburbs and what type of property you can get in each area. We have a conversation about the different way of life in and out of the city. We've got some new music in the background, of course. We've got some music today by Ghost Drones. Uh, Ghost Drones is actually one person. It's Tom Grimmett. He's a friend of David who works with us, lives in the West Midlands and produces dance and electronic music. Uh, He's got a new album. It's out on Bandcamp. Uh, It's called Machines of the Earth. And you can see it in the show notes. You can actually buy it there. You have chosen wisely. First though, just a couple of news snippets. Uh, A big one now, Volkswagen has decided on Segunto for its new Gigafactory battery plant. This is likely to create up to 3,500 jobs between construction and workers at the plant itself when it opens. It's due to open in 2026, they've already started moving the earth and preparing the land, so let's hope the construction is a bit quicker than the new Valencia football stadium, which is still stuck. 14 years after work stopped on it. It's a long project this one. The weather has been playing along nicely recently with daytime temperatures reaching 20 to 23 degrees in the last week. So it looks like spring is here. And spring in Valencia means fires now. And speaking of fires, all COVID restrictions have been lifted now. They were lifted on Tuesday and you can move around without a mask on and you don't have to show your COVID passport on going into bars and restaurants. You still need a mask in hospitals, care homes and a few other settings and individual shops can decide to insist on mask wearing to protect their staff, but it's now at their discretion. If you can't keep your distance, then maybe it's a good idea to keep wearing a mask, especially when it's a colder day, keeps your face warm, you see. I say that as Fias is coming up and we expect huge crowds in the town hall square for the mascletas and at night for the firework displays next month as Valencians need a conduit for burning stuff, not having done it for a couple of years in the traditional way. And that's what Fias does. There's a lot of burning, there's a lot of fireworks, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of fiesta. A small bit of news about the company though. We've changed the name of our internal Valencia Property WhatsApp group to literally nothing left. After so many properties have been sold in the last few weeks that every time we call to see a property, it seems we've just been told it's sold, it's reserved, whatever. Things are absolutely shifting fast at the moment. So if you've got your eye on something, really make a move quickly. Let's get on to our lifestyle in Valencia thing. Living in a big city, and I say a big city with air quotes there, because Valencia is the third biggest city in Spain, but it's not really a big city. It's a different experience, of course. As we've said before on the podcast, Valencia is still very compact, just five miles wide and three miles high. Or eight by six, if you prefer kilometers, 48 square kilometers. You're never far away from a center, which is more or less in the center of that area. Everything therefore is to hand. The furthest you can get away from the centre and still be in Valencia is about four kilometres. Lots of clients contact us initially saying they must be near the centre and end up buying on the edge of the city because to them that's still pretty central when you're comparing the distance into the city centre with places like London, New York, Los Angeles, Shanghai or even places like Amsterdam, Manchester or Paris. The furthest you can get away from the city centre is about four kilometres, as we said, and that is only about an hour's walk. Most places, though, are within half an hour's walk. Equally, the barrios, or the neighbourhoods of the city, all have their own unique character, and oftentimes a centre where the main shops, cafes, bars and restaurants are. You're never more than a few metres away from your local cafe wherever you are in the city. Valencia actually has the greatest number of cafes and bars per 100,000 people of any city in Spain or Europe, believe it or not. And that's an achievement, because there are a lot of bars and restaurants in every single city in Spain. Therefore, the worry of being in the middle of nowhere is never actually a thing in the city. Nevertheless, the worry of being in a noisy area is a constant possibility, requiring local knowledge about whether a particular property might or might not be affected by noise and when. Your typical day in Valencia obviously depends on what you do. But for example, somebody here on the non-lucrative visa who doesn't need to work might well quickly fall into the Valencian timetable of 
getting up relatively late, popping out for the bread and coffee for breakfast, sitting in a cafe for the morning, exploring the city, eating a menu del dia for maybe 10 euros, followed by the siesta to conserve energy for the late nights. Dinner or evening meal only starts around 9pm in most restaurants. And if you meet up with friends later for a drink, then it's likely you'll be home well after midnight and ready to do it again the next day. No, 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 no. For those of us that do need to work, or whose lives are governed by kids, school runs and timetables, things might well be different with an earlier start, work starting around 10am, and a shorter two-hour lunch between 2 and 4 before returning to work until 8pm in the evening, and then rushing around shopping, cooking and relaxing until a late bedtime. We might take more advantage of the weekends to spend some time down by the beach, exploring inland Valencia, or simply spending some family time together with friends. Getting out into the city, exercising, exploring and socialising are big things still, although they are more often done now with a bit of social distancing because of COVID. And there's always something to do, as long as you keep your ear to the ground. There are plenty of options of things to do within the city. After all, as we said, it's the third biggest city in Spain. Obviously, properties in the city are mostly apartments, and outside space is at a premium. Newer builds may have shared facilities such as pools, paddle courts, squash courts and tennis, along with gyms, but older properties abound, so you need to join a gym or get yourself down to the Med or to the Riverbed Park for your exercise. There are some houses in the city, especially in the Cabanyal and Patacona areas, and in some of the neighbourhoods that used to be towns in their own right before they were absorbed into the city, such as Campanar and Benimaclet. But flats are the way to go in the city. Living outside the city and commuting is much more common these days than it was 10 years ago, but less common than it was two years ago. Can you figure out why? These days, with more people working from home than ever before, space in a home has become ever more important and there has been less traffic at rush hours going into and coming out of the city. Result. However, the school runs can still add a few minutes onto your morning journey, especially on Monday mornings when people come back into the city from their country or village homes to get back into the routine of the week. Friday evenings, on the other hand, have more traffic going out to the countryside, so that Valencians can reconnect with their families and friends in villages, and more importantly, make a docking huge great paella. The best areas to live in outside of the city all have one thing in common in our opinion, and that's the ease with which you can get into schools, work and in and out of the city if required. In this we include if you're going to use your car, if you're going to use a bike, if you're going to use the bus or the metro as options. Of course, at this point I have to point out that you can find plenty of articles on our site about the best places to live around the city, with comparisons of distances to get in, our ratings for each place as a village or town and more. Make sure to click through from our recommended articles in the show notes to read them. Life is different living outside the city and not in one of the villages, of course, because you depend much more on your car, bike or electric scooter to get around. When you get home and realise that you've forgotten to buy the milk, then you have to really, really need milk, because you may have to travel 10 minutes in the car and need to park before you can buy some. In the city, you can just pop down to the street and a supermarket or corner shop will be within a couple of hundred metres. That's also true if you live in a village or town. But if you live in your own house on its own grounds outside the town, for example in Lyria, you can be up to 10 kilometres away from the town itself and still be in Lyria. That takes about 10 to 15 minutes in the car. If you have kids, the further you are away from the school where your children attend, the longer you spend each day as a taxi, of course. Half an hour to school during the school run becomes two hours a day in the car to take and pick up your kid. And car sharing has mostly disappeared due to COVID. You can also choose a place on one of the school bus routes if they are in one of the international or private schools and you get rid of your job as a taxi. Without kids, being further away from civilization becomes less of an issue. However, having a fast internet connection is ultra important these days for most people. So you cannot usually go too far away from the towns and urbanizations as remote farmhouses don't tend to have cable internet. Nevertheless, you can often get point-to-point -point WiMAX with fast upload and download speeds as opposed to cable, as long as you're not in a valley without a view of a large area or somewhere. Regarding things to do, there are fewer, but that can be offset by the extra space you get and the better quality of life for those who want a less hectic lifestyle. You have to travel to do shopping, to go to the cinema, to go out to eat. Transport becomes more important to you, so it's worth having a decent car. But as the world comes more into our homes these days through the internet and screens, then lots of people think it's worth it. 
Property is usually a detached house and garden on a plot averaging around 800 metres. But the tendency over the last decade has been for the construction of many more semi-detached and terraced houses with shared facilities on the edge of towns. You also find excellent townhouses in the towns themselves, and of course apartments. But apartments in towns are less popular for some reason with foreign buyers. And I say for some reason as the prices are often excellent. But once people get out of the city itself, they tend to want more space and expect outside space for their money too. So penthouse apartments, they're quite popular, but other apartments not so much. Before we get onto our conversation about whether it's better in our opinion to live inside or outside the city, we're going to talk about our listener questions this week. We've just got two this week because they're actually quite long answers that we give for this. Why don't you do something to help me? Firstly, I spoke with Vicky this week. Uh, she's a potential buyer from the UK about her visa options for people from outside the EU. Remember, the UK is now outside the EU. Now, I know we had an episode about this. Go back to episode five for more information. But she had an interesting question was about permanent residency and the difference between the golden visa and the non-lucrative visa as regards getting permanent residency. The surprising thing is you can get permanent residency quicker with the non-lucrative visa than you can with the golden visa, but there are caveats. With the non-lucrative visa, you can get permanent residency after just five years. Whereas with the golden visa, it takes seven, two years initially, plus five more, then permanent. So why would anyone go for the golden visa when it takes longer to get permanent residency? Well, Firstly, you have no obligation to be here at all during that seven year period. Let's face it, you probably want to be here, but you have no obligation at all. If something happens in a different country, you need to go home, look after a parent or something, you keep your visa despite the fact that you're not here. With the non-lucrative visa, you have to be in Spain for over 183 days every year during the five year period. Also, and very importantly, with the golden visa, you can work from day one in Spain if you want to. You also get beneficiary of the golden visa status for your spouse, any dependent kids and even dependent parents. Now with both of these visas, you can get nationality after 10 years too. This requires some exams, language exams, history of Spain exams, etc. and a lot of paperwork. But if you've been here on the non-lucrative visa or on the golden visa, there's no reason not to grant nationality. Unless of course you fail the language and culture exams. Our second question today is from Martha, and it also tackles an issue of the golden visa, but from a different viewpoint. Have a listen. Hi, Graham. If you don't want to spend 500,000 euros for the golden visa, what would be the benefits of buying versus renting? So the age old question of the value of buying versus renting is interesting, of course, and that's why it's an age old question. I remember reading years ago that everyone in the UK bought as soon as they could, whereas everyone in Germany rented, giving them greater flexibility in work and life, and this was linked to the more dynamic economy. But I don't think I buy that. I don't think it's right. Renting in Germany was very cheap compared with the UK, and so it wasn't worth renting in the UK if you could buy, because you were giving a lot of money to somebody. Renting in Germany was price controlled, so tenants had rights. In the UK and equally in Spain, those tenant rights aren't as strong. So you could suddenly find yourself having to find a place in a market where prices may well have ridden, risen massively since you rented initially. That's the case here in Spain currently. If you're in a long-term rental with the price set years ago, then you stay. However bad the flat is, you often stay. Because moving might mean a doubling of your rent to find a comparable place. And people don't want to do that. That's why you sometimes find places to buy for a song but with tenant. That tenant may have the right to be there until they move on or pass away. In a market that is rising, it seems logical to buy as you can get a mortgage at a very low percentage rate currently and pay less than you are paying out in rent. And a part of that, the money every month goes to pay down the principal of the debt. So let's say you borrow 100,000, every month you're paying a bit of that off and it's going down. And in a rising market, the value of the property is going up. So what you've got is an increase in the equity every month. If prices are rising, that equity gives you a nest egg for the future. Bear in mind, though, that if a crisis comes along and prices fall, then your equity is squeezed. Or you can even get into negative equity if you have a high mortgage. With rentals, it's money down the drain, of course. 
Paying off somebody else's mortgage or increasing their net worth while the property value rises, although on the plus side, you don't tend to have as many costs. If the boiler packs in, then in theory, it's the owner's cost, it's not yours as a tenant. If the roof needs fixing after a storm, it's also on the owner, not the tenant. But as a tenant, you do tend to get wet until the owner decides to get the thing fixed, and that can take some time. Currently, there is hardly anything in Valencia to rent, so finding a good place is difficult. In Martha's case, I know she has a decent place because, well, I found it for her before she arrived here from the USA with her family, and we did it using video calls and chats. The place was actually for sale, on and off, but every time it was rented, it came off the market. It's currently off the market again, of course, because Martha's renting it. Renting for the landing period in Valencia is a decent option. But bear in mind that with the current market conditions, a year's rent might well mean a 20% increase in the value of the property before buying. Therefore, your money that you had a year before, and remember, you've got less money because you paid out 12 months rent, won't go as far as it previously did. That's why we always say visit and get to know the city and which part of the city or which town or village outside we really should be concentrating on for you. Get those ducks in a row, get ready to buy because then you can jump on anything that suits you before the market gets out of hand. One person we know has been looking for three years now. Every month something comes up that may suit them. However, those things are now 30 to 40% more expensive than the ones they saw three years ago. And subconsciously, they're comparing everything with one or two they could have bought then and maybe should have bought then. Of course, nothing at the same price as a few years ago comes close to what they saw. There's maybe one bedroom less or one bathroom less or no outside space. And things that are a bit more expensive are, well, more expensive than those of three years ago and so cannot compare. For them the market is out of hand because the wages are still the same. No rise in the intervening period. Meanwhile, they're paying off somebody's mortgage every month because they're still renting. So what's the answer, Martha? Personally, I think if you're staying long term, then buying is usually a better option. But some people like the opportunity just to up sticks and move at the drop of a hat. My answer be to buy. Your answer might be different. Okay, so in the podcast today, we said we're going to have a conversation about the differences between living in and in the city and outside the city. And so we've got Dave, who was in the previous podcast, and we've got Jess as well, uh, who works with us and does a lot of work down the coast in Denya. And so we've got different viewpoints about what it's like living in the city and living outside. So firstly, Dave, where do you live and why is it comfortable for your lifestyle? Okay, I am in Campanar and we bought about 16, 17 years ago. We were just looking at the catchment area for schools, nurseries, easy access to the city. When I work in the city, I get on the number 92 bus. It takes me 10 minutes to get to Ruth Athler and it's very convenient for our lifestyle. And if you fall asleep on it, you finish at the beach, don't you? Yeah, it keeps going, but you get back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it just a lifestyle thing because of the schools and that more than anything? It was just far enough away from the in-laws not to see them every day. Okay. So. Yeah, 10 minutes so they weren't popping in and out because we did live closer to Benny Clark originally but we thought Campanar is going to be nice, there's going to be new builds going up as there has been and uh, yeah the price have risen a lot but okay. it's still a good area for kids and you're on the fringe of the city but very close to the riverbed as well so it's, it kind of works for what we like to do. Okay and Jess, you live in the city but not at weekends right? Mm -hmm. So go on, how does that work? I live in the middle of Rusafa. Um, during the week. Just like everybody wants to, yeah? <laughs> yeah, but I've been here for 20 years. Ah, so, so you're a, you're a local? I'm a local, yes. And that's what I love about it, being in Rusaf, which is like a little village and knowing everybody. Um, and then on Friday, as early as I can, I get in the car and travel an hour down the road to Denya, um, which is completely different. Um, beach, silence, um, and you don't have to see anyone if you don't want to. You don't have to say hello to anyone. Just walks in the countryside, walks on the beach, 
And, and this is uh, important because you're right by the beach in Denia, yeah? Yeah, right on the beach. And so why did you choose Denia, which is like, well, when did you buy it? Um, I didn't buy it. Sorry, when did you rent it? <laughs> About 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Yeah. So at the time, it was pretty expensive to get down there, right? Unless you use the old road, and then it's a pretty long time to get there because there were tolls on the motorway. That's right, but I didn't discover my love of it until um, sort of pandemia. Because <laughs> when all the bars shut down in Rusafa, mm -hmm. Um, it didn't really hold that much appeal, so I started going to Denia more. So you're saying the only appeal of Ruth Afra <laughs> is the bars, is that true? Well, the social life, yes. Okay. Okay. And when there wasn't any, that was when I started using the apartment in Denia more. Um, and now you do it virtually every weekend, yeah? Every weekend, yes. Yeah. Okay. Before it would be like a couple of weeks in summer or what have you. Uh -huh. so, Living in the city, both of you, uh, I don't, as you know, I live outside the city and I come into the city to do anything. So, what are the main issues of living in the city? Trying to park. Okay, we've just seen a parking space in Rufafa and I think that's the first time in six months. I took a picture. I did actually say I took a picture of it. I was that shocked. I thought I was hallucinated. It's difficult to park anywhere in the city and, you know, when we're out with clients we tend to focus on areas so we don't use the car so much. But it's easy to get around. Uh, the disadvantage of the city as well is it's a bit noisy. Valencia's a bit kind of everybody's outside a lot and there's always things going on and if you're sensitive to noise then maybe not choose Ruth Affer or the Carmen if you're looking for property. Especially if you're sending um, sensitive to building noise. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much building going on at the moment. Yeah. We, I was out yesterday with some people and it was every property we looked at there was something going on in the same building. Mm -hmm. It's that it's that active at the moment. Me too. Out of every window you can hear the diggers and this and that and the other. It's good, but you just have to put up with it for a few months. Yeah, because um, I was in Torrent last week and they were putting up a whole new... Well, they were digging down for a swimming pool for a whole new block behind where we went to see, so it wasn't the quietest place in the world. At the moment, you tend to have that in most places because there's so much activity going on. They've nearly finished the one near me, but now they're doing the roads. Oh, because yeah. Because they're widening all the pavements, so it's like, oh, it's done. Oh, no, hold on a minute. They started again because they're doing something else now. But it's looking good, actually. It's uh, good for the area. So, apart from the noise, apart from the traffic, what other issues do you have in the city? Are there any? Too many Dutch people. <laughs> I just say at this point, we are recording this uh, in the uh, terrace of our friends at Dream Properties and that's the Dutch estate agent in Rutafa, but they've got a nice little terrace at the back and uh, because of all the people, at the, sc uh, the schools have just come out, so all of the cafes were full and noisy, so we wouldn't have been able to record this very well, so we decided to come here and he's just looked at Erwin while saying that, but Erwin didn't see us, so we're okay. Are you recording? I'm recording, yeah, of course. Yeah. You, cho you chose the city, I chose outside the city because I actually got more space for what I wanted. I got uh, outside space, I got a pool and things like that, which I actually used twice last year. It was really good. Um, <laughs> and, but when the kids were younger, uh, we used it a lot. Uh, but living outside the city, I got a lot more space than I would in the city for the same price. And I've always said there's this ripple effect the further you get away from Valencia, the cheaper it gets. Yeah. So when you're taking people out, you often take people out uh, outside the city as well. Um, why do they choose to be outside the city rather than inside the city? What are they generally looking for? What I've found is with clients who've come from bigger cities, they look for outside space so they think that they're, where they know they're going to get better value in the sticks or in the towns and the villages and they're looking for that. And then people who live in the countryside in Northern Europe, they look for city apartments because they want more life. It's, it's a total complete about face of, uh, well I've got this, I know what this is like, I want that, that and that. So they're looking for like a lock up and leave when they're coming from? Kind of, yeah. I think people who are used to having gardens in England or, or anywhere else that they come from are probably going to go for an apartment if they can get one with a suitable outside space. Uh -huh. What do you reckon? Um, people who want to live outside the city looking for a better life for their dogs. For the dogs? <laughs> At the schools because they're bringing the kids and they need to be close to the international schools as well. All the inquiries we're having late, lately are for, I'm looking at putting my kids in the school for, from September, so we need to buy something in the next few months so we've got, we're ready, we can find a placement. Yeah, we've just done that in Torrem with somebody who, uh, they knew which school the kid was going to and so they wanted to be within walking distance of that school. So yeah. their, their radius was actually walking distance, not getting in the car in the morning and going 20 minutes or whatever. 20 minutes would have been the walking distance maximum. Yeah. 
So you can set your clock by this. It's always this time of year that we've had people to come and look in Leliana, and then I'm taking my kid to the Plantio or Cambridge or whatever school they're going to be going to. So I need, and everybody says, within 20 minutes of the school. Yeah, but what, what I think people don't realise before we actually tell them, which we generally do, is that if you live in the city, you generally can pick to be on a school bus run mm. because all the schools, all the international schools anyway, have got school bus pickup points all over the city and you can just wave off your kid in the morning and you don't need to become a taxi. It's a bit it's a bit different from uh, what they imagine when they first come over and they say, you know, uh, do I need to be in the same postcode in order to get into the school? Because it's different with international schools because if you pay and there's spaces available, you can get in, you don't need to live nearby. But we always say, well, we've got a client, for example, in Via Machant, and they're thinking of selling because it's too far away from the school every morning. It's 45 minutes to the school every morning and 45 minutes back, and then the same in the afternoon. Mm. Three hours taxi every day. I think it's the prices in the city, though. They're seeing apartments and maybe looking at 200 or 250 or 300, whatever their budget is, and realising it's not quite big enough or it's not quite right for them. So that's when they do go outside of town. And they get a lot more value for money when for they sure. do. For no. sure. Yeah. Lot twice twice the, the value for money. Yeah. What I'm always surprised with is people don't go for apartments in the towns outside. They, it's, it's always a house. Not even townhouses to a general extent, but they won't go for apartments, even if they get like the big terrace that they want in the city, mm. which they can't get in the city. They won't go to say, let's say, Better or Leliana or anywhere like that and get an apartment with a big terrace. They'll go, no, we'll have a house. I always find that weird because we've hardly ever sold any apartments in, in the towns around. We've sold a lot of houses and we've sold townhouses, but apartments? Hardly ever. Denia's a bit different though, isn't it? Um, yeah, Den Denia is um, very different from other coastal towns because it's um, all year round. Uh, which is unusual around it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, we ha have had a client buy a townhouse there. Mm -hmm. um, Hello, Mark. <laughs> yes. He listens, by the way. Hi, hello Mark. So in Denia you either buy an apartment or a house in the country mm -hmm. um, and people do buy apartments in Denia even though it's a town. Because generally they'll get a terrace let's say with maybe with sea views or something which you can't get in a lot of places yeah? There's a lot more beach yes. Yes and the other thing of course is that we've uh, recently just sold a house down there for someone who uh, wanted well, they didn't want to spend as much as they did. Eventually they spent 500000 because of the legalities of the places that they were looking that were cheaper, yeah? Yeah. So what was the problem there? Um, anything under that price range, because it's quite expensive in Denia um, to buy property because there isn't a lot of it and it's illegal to construct. As we found out with the f their first choice, <laughs> that half of the building was illegal and there was no way to legalise it because it was been built on national parkland. Yeah, that was good of it, Mark. <laughs> um, so uh, then as soon as you uh, increase your budget, then you find legal properties. Legal properties with water, with electric, etc. Yeah. Indeed. I lived in Denia 20 years ago when I first came to Spain. It was really sleepy and mm -hmm. very seasonal. On the last few times I've been there, I'm really surprised and it's great. And it, I, th I always say to people as well, in fact, to choose to buy anywhere on the coast, it'd certainly be there. I think, the, I think because the boats to the islands as well, and it's yeah. it's just a town that's that's all, there's always something going on. It's yeah. really vibrant. And the restaurants are great, and there's so much competition that the quality is always good. And Moreira's beautiful, but it's too slow and too quiet. And Javier's really expensive, and it's a bit no, of an Denia's expat got enclave. A, Denia ticks the boxes mix. because it's got a good mix. Yeah, good yeah. mix of locals and sophisticated. Yeah. Well, it's foreigners. got young, it's got younger people as well, hasn't it? Which, um, for example, uh, I'd say Javier, for example, has got an older population. You know, we usually use the term God's waiting room for Javier. Mm. But Denia's actually got things happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got jobs and industry and... Mm -hmm. It's a proper town. Yeah. The, uh, the ferries to the Balearic Islands, though, it helps massively. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. so many people going through all the time. And that's the, that is, that's, that's the reason, isn't it? It's for the work. People mm -hmm. live there seasonally and also all year round as well. But 20 years ago, it would, it would just shut down in October. Like most when of the coastal towns. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's great, then. It's really, a really nice place now. Coming back closer to Valencia, though, if you're looking at places that uh, give you the access into the town, I mean, I, li I live in La Pobla de Bona, so coming in to do this interview this afternoon, it took me 20 minutes to pick you up on the edge of the city, another 10 minutes, and we're parked in the centre, so it's half an hour into the centre. So within that range of half an hour, we've got quite a few towns and villages which people like to go to. Now, obviously, we've got Laliana, which is very popular. We've got Nakara, which is popular. 
and maybe just on the edge of that is via my chant which is quite popular because the prices tend to be uh, quite a bit lower in via my chant than Laliana for example and quite a bit lower in Nakara than Laliana so what other towns uh, do you think are good to look at at least well there was the article that I sent in a little whatsapp group yesterday about the Volkswagen factory or what would you call that? The the Jigger factory. I've actually mentioned that in the news in the podcast. In Savund. Yeah. So there could be a massive injection of people looking at properties there. So it's certainly an area where you think it's going to improve. Savund itself is nice. Savund or the beach, maybe not so much. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too far from Valencia. And we've, I've just had inquiries just looking at my phone right now for Port Supplier. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're getting inquiries for Port Supplier because they're seeing stuff in Cabanyal. It's so expensive. Patagonia for me is too sterile and people say oh what do you think of Port Supplier yeah. and we used to think oh, it's not great and it dies in the winter but actually all year round it's yes. really good now because it's, it's got people there all year now it's yeah. been it's been forced out into the to the outskirts I went to see a place there the other day uh, with Gaff and it was uh, it was a whole house uh, it's similar to my house it's like on three floors but it mm. did have a basement as well we're looking at potential it had three living rooms rather than four bedrooms for some reason yeah had three living rooms but it had its own little uh, uh, terrace at the back which overlooked the marina and things and it was like 550 and then you know if for someone who's looking for the golden visa you get a lot more for your money there than you would say in a, a penthouse in Valencia now. Yeah. yeah. But the whole Orta Nord area up to Segundo, there's plenty of great townhouses around there which are really really cheap. Well there's some nice towns, I mean Albalat that we were in last year looking at properties with a client who we eventually bought in the city and I was quite surprised at that because yeah. looking at these houses that we weren't familiar with for 350, 400,000 they're absolute palaces but they this, it was a lifestyle option they preferred to buy in the city in the end. Yeah, yeah. And then they did it up, didn't you Corinne? <laughs> <laughs> she listens as well. <laughs> Still doing it up. Um, it's finished now. Meliana's, Meliana's alright. Yeah. For yours is okay. There's some of them, there's good ones and bad ones, but Albalat is is amazing. It's really they've spent a lot of money out there. I've got some money to like European funds or something, but it's really impeccable. The, well, gra the, the grass is manicured and there's yeah. a big castle in the middle of the town and you just go. Yeah, the Jigger factory's actually been uh, a lot of it's coming from the U the European funds for redevelopment after COVID, um, okay. and that's why they're putting it in there. It need a town like that needs something in South Wood, though. Well, they've, got, kind they've of also got the, the new Mercadona headquarters are going up in the, uh, to the north. It's and in that's Museros, gonna, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Museros, and that's going to create a few thousand jobs as well. So that area, you know what Spanish people are like, they want to live near where they work. So that area is going to get more popular, simple as that, because they'll want to live around the corner from where they work. Good place to invest then, because the, the workers are going to need to live somewhere. recommended video this week. We talked last week about the FIAS exhibition at City of Arts and Sciences and we've searched out a couple of videos from the local newspapers and that which show the FIAS models as they are in the City of Arts and Sciences. Take a look, it's just a couple of minutes and the link is in the show notes. The articles mentioned in the podcast today are listed in the show notes too. We've got one about distances and times into Valencia from the surrounding towns. We've got one about inland Valencia towns where you can grab a great lifestyle. And we've got another about the race for space in Valencia. Our recommended property this week, well, we love a lot of the little towns around Valencia in the beautiful interior countryside. And one of the most beautiful places is Sot de Chera. A boat hole in this lovely little village for your weekend getaways can be got for as little as 40,000 euros. Take a look on the website to see our latest listings and in the show notes we have a link to a small townhouse for just €40,000. It's a really nice place to get away from for the weekend and also I'm sure you'll be able to rent it out to friends and family who want to get away as well. And that's it for this week, we hope you enjoyed it again and if you've got any questions remember to send them in with the voice note and we'll answer them in future episodes. Thank you for the music to Ghost Drones, to Kevin McLeod, and to Another Brick. And don't forget our competition, which we're running at the moment to win the two books, uh, one about graffitis in Valencia and the other about a uh, visit by Robert Frank in 1952. They're excellent prizes. Uh, all you need to do to win is answer the four questions in the lab last podcast. Uh, listen back so you can hear the questions. 
Give us a good review, share the podcast on social media, and send us an email telling us what you've done. We had some really good reviews so far, and we've had some brilliant feedback off people, and we'd like to thank everyone for it. Wait, 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 not so fast! This has been a podcast from Valencia Property. You can find us on our homepage at www.valencia-property.com. Also, if you put a backslash and new onto that, you'll get our blog, but you can find it on the homepage anyway. You can get in touch with us on information at valencia-property.com or you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, of course, on Valencia Property. We're on Twitter, that's Greyhunt, G-R-A-H-U-N-T, and you can also find us on Instagram. Wherever you find us, we hope to see you in Valencia soon. Goodbye!